Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at hybrid autopilot. Now, I decided to do this video because there aren't that many videos that cover hybrid autopilot. There are tons that cover autopilot, but not none that actually move from cloud only to hybrid. Um, and I assume that's because it's more difficult to demonstrate. So I want to give it a go and see how it works. Um, essentially, hybrid autopilot is very similar to cloud-only autopilot, except that your devices end up being connected to the on-prem AD, as well as Azure AD, and an MDM of some sort. In my case, it'll be Intune. There are some prerequisites, so we'll, we'll start with some, with some steps. Firstly, we've got to grab the autopilot hash from the VM. I'll do that again. I did it in the cloud-only video, but just so that it's, it's fresh in our mind, I'll do that again for this one. Plus, I do need to do it, so I might as well do it on camera. Um, then I'm going to upload that to to Intune and while it's happening I'll install the Intune connector for Active Directory and that's the thing that's going to be um, connecting my autopilot devices to my on-premise AD. It's going to be doing the domain join on behalf of the computers. So then after that I'm going to have to give it delegated rights to do that for many many devices. By default you get 10 normally but I need I want to make this work for more than 10 potentially so I'm going to delegate the rights to add more than 10 devices to Active Directory for that computer. Uh, and then we'll head over to Intune and do the autopilot config. So, yep, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so I'm on my virtual machine. Um, this is not one I've, I've captured the autopilot config from uh, hardware ID from before, so I'll, I'll just do that now. Okay, so the command to bring up the command prompt in, uh, in out-of-box experience is function shift f10 on my computer or in your case it could just be shift f10 because that's the actual command um, and so then i'm just going to quickly go through this process uh, i'll speed it up while i do it so i won't be doing any talking and then we'll have that autopilot hash put into our autopilot uh, list okay so i made a few errors there when i was typing i was just doing it from memory but if you're interested in, in what I was doing there and why I was doing that and what I was saying yes to and, and all that, check out the previous video uh, up the top and that will essentially guide you through all of that. I didn't want to cover all of that again because I've just done it in the previous week's video. So please take a look at that. Okay, so it's uploaded. It started to upload my, um, my autopilot device from my VM to my Intune tenant. So let's jump into uh, the Intune console and grab the Intune connector. Okay, so on the Intune console, or the Endpoint Manager console now, um, we're gonna go into Devices, and then Windows, Windows Enrollment, and we get this familiar pane here. So it's a Intune connector for Active Directory. It's really simple to do this, so we're just gonna click Add, and then it says just download this. Yeah, so we're going to download this file here by clicking on download the on-premise Intune connector for Active Directory. Click that and it takes us to a download page and then starts downloading this. I've already downloaded it because it's a pain for me to transfer it to the virtual machines. So I've done that. So let's jump over to the VM where I've already put the file on the desktop for us. So I'm going to install it on a domain controller. You don't need to use a domain controller. It can be anywhere that has access to look up DNS and to create computers in your AD. This is the file that I downloaded, the ODJ connector bootstrapper. As you can see, it, it downloaded very recently, so if you match the clocks there, this says it's it's just about an hour ago, so I'm just gonna give that a go. And it says you can install this on as many computers as you want. Really, I'm gonna use one computer to, to run this uh, agent, but you could have lots of computers running this. Microsoft recommend at least two, so that you've got redundancy and resiliency there. Let's give this a few seconds to install. And so once it's installed, we need to configure it. We're going to link it to our tenant. I'll click configure now. And so I need global admin or Intune service admin in order to be able to do this. So I'm going to Use my global admin because it is nice and simple. But if you are using proper role based or then, uh, access control, then you could theoretically use an Intune service admin. Uh, I've already got mine linked here from 
previous logins that I've done, so I'm just going to log in. And then accept the MFA challenge. And so that really simple, it just says the Intune Connector for AD is successfully enrolled. Uh, you click OK and that's it. There's nothing else to do in this. That, uh, there's nothing else to do. There's nothing else you can do. It, there's there's blanked out sign in. So it's, it's pretty much it. So now if we jump back over to the tenant and refresh this, you should see that in a few seconds this will have a new connector listed. And there it is. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the next steps. So I think it, this this um, computer, it's, it's got the connector name, and this is literally the computer name of this device that I've installed the connector on. This is a, the computer that's going to be joining my computers to Active Directory. So I'm going to need to give this computer some permission to do that. Now, in some environments, computers aren't permitted to join computers to AD for obvious reasons. So uh, I'm going to need, in my, in my environment, they are, but... I'm going to also want to up the limit from 10 to more than 10 because I might want to do this demonstration many times. So let's jump into AD and do that delegation. So this is the OU that I'm going to be using, or this maybe could be the OU. I mean, maybe you're going to be creating your own um, autopilot computers OU. And maybe you want to use it there. So that maybe this is where you can join computers to to AD from autopilot. So I'm going to delegate control in the delegation of control wizard and add in my domain controller to this. So I want to give it permission to create selected objects um, in this folder, and this is the, the selected object will be computer accounts, computer objects. Uh, so just choose next. And I'm going to need to give it full permissions on this. So tick all the boxes, then choose full control. And that's pretty much it. So that's going to go ahead and do those permission changes for me. And then we've installed the connector already, so we, we, we just need to get started with the autopilot profile. I'll jump over to the endpoint manager admin center and back over to devices and enroll devices. And we're going to head into deployment profiles and take a look at the, the Windows autopilot deployment profiles that we've got. So we've got cloud only, which is a demonstration I did for a customer. An autopilot demo I used last week for a demonstration of cloud only. And right now I'm going to try a new one. So this is going to be hybrid autopilot demo. It's going to be user driven still as opposed to self deploying, but we're going to do hybrid Azure AD joined. We don't need to skip the domain connectivity check here. But we could do so. The reason you might want to do that is if you are using um, a VPN to connect back into the domain during autopilot to do that domain join. So I think that's pretty much it. So I'm not going to use white glove. It adds a bit of complexity to the to the to the process. It, it requires a TPM and requires a lot of other attestation that I don't want to com add, add the complexity right now. But I mean, you could press yes if that's what you're aiming to do. It will certainly work. Uh, and that's it. So uh, notice it's not offering me the, the option to add a device name template. That has to be done through a config profile, so we'll do that shortly. But this really is, the, is it. So we've, we've done that. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of it. So we're, we're going to add my, um, I forget what it was called, maybe autopilot or in tune autopilot devices there we go okay so we'll just assign that to there and then notice we've not told it which domain to join we're going to need to do that and we're going to need to tell it which uh, computer name we wanted to pick when it does join the domain otherwise it'll just pick the default so i'll click create and then we'll head over to our devices node and have a look at some config profiles so i want to create a profile 
which will join the domain. So it's going to be Windows 10 or later, and it will be one of the templates that we get, and it's simply domain join. So let's do that. Create, and then call it domain join. And the computer name prefix will be hybrid dash. And the domain name is, I think it's corp.contosa.com. Now I do want the OU to be specified, so I'm going to jump into my uh, domain controller and find that OU. Now notice if you are using the well-known computers account, so this, this one that sits in the root of your domain, um, don't use this. If you specify it here, then that will break and that simply won't work. So if you're just hoping for them to join just in the standard computers OU, the well-known computers location, then don't don't add any config in the organizational unit. It's, it's, it's definitely just optional at that point. Uh, it Actually, it's not required at that point. It, it, it will break if you do that. So yeah, domain name is done, organizational unit done. Okay, so we're gonna assign this to our autopilot devices. Group, choose next and next and create. And then that's done. Okay, so what have we got left? Um, so jump into my virtual machine. It's still, still at this screen here, but I'm gonna just close that down and then give it a, a reboot. While it's rebooting, let's jump over to our autopilot devices section and see if our device has synchronized as yet. Because it wasn't too long ago that we did that. So it is there, brilliant. And we've got this uh, this updating section here. So okay, let's take a look at what this one is. So 6010 looks like a new one, assigned today, not long ago. Um, it's assigning the autopilot demo. Um, profile which isn't what I wanted so yeah let's let's take that and take a step back and um, unassign the autopilot demo profile from these machines ah look my group is all autopilot devices that's not good I'm going to remove that assignment and I'm going to head back into my deployment profile and just add that as an assignment. Hmm. Uh, so I've added in my um, my old autopilot device there. I will need to do that for the for the configuration profile as well that I created uh, incorrectly, assigning it to the wrong group. My bad. I've forgotten what is in the autopilot devices group, so this can't hurt to keep them both in there. So that's uh, that's good. Okay, so we'll save that, and then we'll give the uh, autopilot process a little bit of time to to catch up. Okay, so updating sixty ten and uh, assigning. Hybrid autopilot demo. That was nice and quick. That was that was live. I didn't cut that. That was um, that was really quick for it to change up there. So let's give it a few seconds to finish doing the assignment. It can take up to fifteen minutes in my experience, but uh, you know, go make a coffee and come back. In in my case, for your benefit, I'll cut the video and then we'll come back when it's ready. All right. So the profile's assigned. Let's jump back into the virtual machine and see what we can do. Now, while this is rebooting, you'll notice that all of these have changed profiles. So they, this uh, this one originally would have been uh, Lucy, and it, she was um, she was designed the autopilot demo originally and built the device as the autopilot demo. But now she's got the hybrid autopilot demo, um, so essentially is is a hybrid computer. And now this obviously isn't going to retrospectively change Lucy's computer. Lucy will continue with her cloud-only device until she either resets it from the interface, if she can, or 
the machine goes through a, a wipe of some sort, fire in tune or somehow, and reboots into the out of box experience. So that's the only st stage at, at which this change that I've made now will actually have an effect on Lucy's computer. Let's see if this device is now back up and running. Okay, so it says it's got some important important setting up to do, which is the kind of the key thing that you see when you're doing autopilot. Um, it, it takes a little bit longer to go through this process than it would if you didn't have autopilot assigned, but it, it should be the same between cloud only and hybrid. Okay, so you'll see that this now says welcome to Get Modern, and I have rebooted it since the new autopilot profile was assigned, so I can only assume that this is my hybrid demo. So let's go ahead and choose next. Uh, let me log in. I got the password right, which is a, a plus. So it's now going through the process and we'll see just what happens when all of this starts to work. Ah, here's a good question for me while I think about it. Have I given this computer access to the domain? Of course I haven't. Um, so <laughs> let's add a quick network adapter there to just let it access the domain. Um, I think we'll be alright. I don't think it would have done the domain join just yet. Um, but at least now it has access to the domain. That was a little omission from me there. So when I've been building these cloud only devices, obviously there's no need for me to have any domain access. So I've, I've not been using that. I've now added that in. Hopefully that's gonna, gonna allow this computer to contact the domain during the domain join process. Okay, so this device has been saying, please wait while we set up your device for 25 minutes now. Um, let's take a look at the domain controller. So, okay, so in my autopilot computer, uh, OU, I have this computer called HYB, H-Y-B, and then a random name. So that's promising. Um, but, <laughs> as if as if on command, something went wrong. Confirm that you're using the correct sign-in information and that your organization uses this feature. You can try again or contact your sysadmin. I love that message. Um, I'll write myself a letter, shall I? Maybe a quick email or a... Yeah. Um, okay, so, and the error code is hilariously vague. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is, um, essentially, I, I'm going to go into some troubleshooting, but let's make that another video, because this is already too long to start troubleshooting uh, hybrid autopilot. I think what we have proven, though, is that this might be why there are no videos around that, around of... Um, of, of hybrid autopilot because it's too difficult to do uh, compared to cloud only. Anyway, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit defeat and seal this up right now and say thank you for watching. We will get, we will get through this. I will fix this. I promise. We'll, we'll do a video of, of troubleshooting and fixing it. But for now, something went wrong. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, leave me a comment, tell me how terrible I am at hybrid autopilot. Uh, but yeah, bye for now.